If you don't have ideas, read. If you have ideas but can't articulate them, write. If you have ideas and the clarity to execute, build. Expand, organize, and focus your mind until your craziest ideas become reality. Ever since I can remember, I've had the goal of doing what I love for a living. Isn't that what everyone wants? My family, teachers, and even the people I was following online screamed at me to go down other paths. So that's what I did. I went to college and didn't finish after five years. I learned creative skills on the side. I started every online business imaginable. I learned to code because it was lucrative, dropped out of college because it was wasting my time, and got a $55,000 a year job as an entry-level web designer at a design agency. Throughout this entire journey, the goal of doing what I love for a living stuck in the back of my head. I was constantly reminded of it, and there was rarely a moment where I wouldn't be working on a personal project in my life. And I still maintain this habit to this day because it's really the only thing that keeps me sane. Because when I get overwhelmed or anxious or have these other negative emotions or I'm just thinking about meaningless things, it's usually due to the concept of psychic entropy or the mind tending toward disorder. Because the only reason I fall into a rut or into a season of overwhelm or anxiety or whatever it may be is because I've lost focus. So my focus is allowed to be split to these other things. So in order to reverse entropy, you need to order your mind. You need to focus on something that brings structure to your mind. And in most cases, that is a project. And a project can be more than just like working on your computer. Your relationship can be a project. Your life can be a project. Your health can be a project. And of course, your business and accompanying skill set can also be a project. So my current projects are Cortex, a second brain software, Cortex University, which is an extension of that, that is a, an education platform and community for creators, writers, marketers, promoting my book, planning another book to write in Cortex, and gaining a few more pounds on my frame before I trim down for the summer. Why am I telling you all of this? Because I realized most people didn't know what they were talking about. I was taking career and life advice from people who hadn't achieved what I wanted to achieve. In their closed mind, the reality I wanted to create was impossible, yet I kept looping back to projects that I loved working on for the sake of maintaining my own sanity. Most people don't have a personal project that will create the future they want. Most people don't realize a personal project is not optional to create the future they want. The only other option is to live by your programming, pursue the goals that society set for you, and work on projects that lead to those goals. If you don't spend one hour building your dreams, you will spend eight hours building someone else's for life. Ten years ago, my mindset was this. If I can monetize any of these passion projects, I'll be set. All I need to do is learn and build until one works. I need to increase my capacity for luck with skill acquisition and experience. It may take 10 years, but some people go to school for 12, and even if I fail, I'd be in a similar position. After years of trial and error with every business model and marketable skill and everything else that people tell you to learn that's useful, I found the secret. It's not really a secret, it's just something that you may not have realized the importance of, and I call it a secret to capture your attention to make you change your behavior and prevent you from scrolling mindlessly, looking at memes all day and not doing anything with your life. Not really, but you know, it's a secret, but I'll let you know what the secret is, okay? Now, before we begin, this is a very long video. This is a very technical video. We're going to go over a lot of good, dense information that will take a lot of practice. This isn't something you just watch and hope that you retain the first time around. I want you to take notes. I want you to have the bandwidth available to you to actually focus on this video and implement it. Aside from that, just another reminder that The Art of Focus is now available on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, or audiobook version. For those that, for the lot of people that have been messaging me, telling me that it is not available in their country, I apologize for that. I didn't realize that Amazon would do, would do that in the first place. So it'll be available on my website soon, so just stay tuned for that. So the secret we're going to talk about is writing. Shocker. But I want to give you some perspective shifts here. So first, here's a graphic that pretty much just shows that writing is everything, which we'll dive into, but you can screenshot this 
set it as your wallpaper, whatever you want to do to remind yourself that writing is extremely important. The future of media is decentralized. People are and will continue to turn to social media for news, courses for education, creators for knowledge. I don't want to hear about AI disrupting writing just yet because I find it extremely hard to believe that people will get their media fix all from AI generated or robot generated content. That's just not how humans work. AI is a tool that helps writers and humans become more pro prolific in their work, study, whatever they're doing. It helps them do more but better. And of course, there are other use cases for AI. Writing is the skill that breathes life into any other skill you learn. It is the meta skill that people avoid learning until they are forced to because they need to survive. They don't see its importance because it's just plain old writing who needs to learn that. There was a reason I failed at almost every other business model I tried. Digital art, SEO, Facebook ads, dropshipping, e-commerce stores, and more. I was so focused on learning the skill and building a website that I forgot I actually had to get customers at some point. How do you get customers? Writing. Content, or media, is the front end of the internet. It's how you capture, hold, and convert attention in a sea of self-deprecating memes and valueless content. The foundation of content is writing. Tweets are writing. Threads are writing. Newsletters are writing. Blog posts are writing. Cold emails are writing. Social media captions, writing. Landing pages, writing. Product descriptions, course modules, client communications, writing, writing, writing. Customer resources, writing. Ads of any form starts with writing, YouTube videos done best with written scripts, Instagram reels and TikToks, it's like reading well-written tweets or video scripts. Images on Instagram are usually designed from a well-written quote or saying. Any other form of online marketing, advertising or entertainment all starts with writing. Everything that your audience, customers and network sees starts with writing. Don't underestimate that power. Every single person in business is a writer at their core. They just don't label themselves as that. And if you're a creator, you need to focus on writing rather than posting shirtless pictures, like if you're a fitness guy, because you need to monetize your intelligence, not your looks. That way you can pivot with the times and you can build a sustainable income. And now I'm not here to teach you academic or technical writing. I'm here to teach you high impact digital writing. I'm not here to teach you how to write a research paper. I'm teaching you how to do what you want. So let's go over a quick, but it's still probably going to take five to 10 minutes, six steps to start a one person writing business, because this is important before I actually teach you how to write. Content is an extension of the personal and collective mind. We put out our ideas, beliefs, and opinions that form a digital society, cultures, and world. Content on the internet is content in the collective consciousness. That's a quote from my book, The Art of Focus. That's a rather esoteric one. In the book, there's more like practical advice tied along with that, but I know that some of you like the esoteric take, so I included that quote there. I call myself a writer because that's what I do every single morning. And even when I'm messaging people, I would say 95% of what I do every single day when I get on my computer and I'm typing on my keyboard to sustain or build any kind of business, that's writing. Like what else are you doing if you're not typing on the keyboard? You're not doing anything online. And just to let you know what's possible and open your mind to this is that I've sustained $100,000 to $250,000 per month and that sometimes fluctuates depending on product launches, et cetera, just how well content does that can fluctuate up to $500,000 to $750,000 a month. That's revenue, not profit by writing tweets, newsletters, and threads that get repurposed into Instagram posts, YouTube videos, LinkedIn posts, everything else. So in reflection and referring to the beginning of this video, writing is the force multiplier that makes me have to pay 20 times my previous web design salary in taxes each year. That sucks, but it's a good problem to have. Now, I also want to let you know that it's not all or nothing. You don't need all platforms and all this stuff or nothing. It's like if you were to strip everything but Twitter or X and the newsletter away from me, a huge chunk of that revenue would still be maintained right? It's not like you go from zero to 1 million when you just start making money. You go from zero to 10,000 to 20,000 to however much it is, and you can make life-changing money in the course of one, two, three years, however long it takes for things to click and you to actually understand and internalize the skill of making money, which houses many other skills. So let's get into the six steps. First is choose the topic you can't shut up about. Don't overthink this just yet. Pick a topic and practice writing. The keyword there is just pick a topic you can't shut up about. 
If you're already a creator or writer, just use your topic tree. If you don't have a topic tree, then watch the video, Social Media Content 101. Step two is to brainstorm your unique perspective. Forget everything you know about value. Actionable advice and platitudes don't sell as well as they did when the internet was first budding. Novelty catches attention. Attention is a given if you want people to read what you write. Novel perspectives are the best and most replicable way to capture attention without using sleazy tactics. How do you come up with a novel perspective? You brain dump common problems associated with the topic, benefits to overcoming those problems, common goals associated with the topic, roadblocks to achieving those goals, and personal experiences you've had. Now, piece everything together and explain it how you would if you were talking to a friend. This is such a good way to come up with better ideas or points of views that you can illustrate in your content. You map out some marketing principles or just universal principles, goals, problems, benefits, personal experiences around a topic, and then you piece those together, you order them so they make sense, and then you say them as if you were talking to a friend or you were explaining it to a friend. You're just using that as a structure, but since you come up with it, that's how you do it. Step three is to write 500 to 1,000 words on the topic per week. You need a balance of depth and growth, meaning you need long form and short form. I'm big on starting a newsletter as your long form, but that can wait at the start. Focus on one platform like X. Write threads as your long form once a week. Write two to three posts a day. Then focus on step five that will go over the most for growth. I'll break down how to write these 500 to 1,000 words soon. Step four is to deconstruct and simplify ideas for daily posts. Writing long form gives you multiple ideas to pull from. Don't try to copy paste posts from your newsletters or threads. Rewrite them as standalone short posts. We will discuss this throughout the letter. Step five is learn how to get your writing shared, which is crucial. Your writing means nothing if nobody sees it. This is a huge beginner trap. They think they can write all day and hope that our Lord and Savior, the algorithm, will make them an overnight success. No. Writing is 20% of the equation, traffic is 80%. You can get traffic on your profile and writing through replies, networking, and shares. I break down every possible way to get your writing shared in the video, how to actually build an audience with zero followers. I believe that's what it's called. Step six is to monetize your experience. Now that you have writing, a growing audience, and traffic, the only thing left to do is create a product or service to monetize. And we discussed all possible options for this in last week's video which is the seven digital career paths. And all of this is what we teach in Cortex University. We allow you to join a community that helps you share your writing and that you can network with and get feedback on your products, your brand, your content. And we have bi-weekly bi trainings and bi-weekly content incubators and bi-weekly workshops for writing, plus strategy library, all of this stuff. Now we're into the juicy stuff here. This is everything you need to know about high impact writing. Writing is the vehicle for articulated thought and communication. It is the medium for putting your message in front of those that can adopt the perspective it presents and operate within that reality. Another quote from my book, The Art of Focus. Now, there are a lot of writing frameworks out there. This is what I'm going to suggest because people always come to me and they're like, I don't know what to write. Well, are you using a framework that tells you what to write next? No, okay. Problem number one, when you use a writing framework, you're leveraging psychology. That's what these writing frameworks are built for. It's to help people focus their mind. It's like what I talked about earlier with you getting overwhelmed and anxious when you aren't focusing on a project because you don't have structure that orders your mind. If your writing doesn't have a structure that orders the reader's mind, then it's not going to be good writing. They're not going to finish it. You're not putting them into the flow state. Your writing isn't a game that they're trying to read. There are a few frameworks that I recommend just studying. The first is Pastor. The second is ADA. The next is PAS or PASO. So PASS or PASO. Just Google those. Pastor writing framework, ADA writing framework, etc. Study those, try them, use them. But we're going to go over my own writing framework, which is APAG. But the similarities between all of these writing frameworks are this. A problem is introduced or implied, making people curious about what caused that problem, the law of cause and effect. Hint at the effect and then dive into the cause. It exposes people to a potential sequence of events. 
This is similar, but makes people want to understand the sequence of events that led to a particular resolution or the happy ending of a story. Last, it creates an information gap, implying that there is educational, entertaining, or inspiring information that specific reader desires. Once curiosity is sparked, you must deliver on your promises through a personal, client, or other experiences that state or imply a transformation, a before, the problem, and an after, the resolution and associated benefits. Then you need step-by-step -step advice on how to get to the resolution quicker, a unique solution. And then you need a crystal clear call to action to lead them deeper into your other content or spark behavior change, again, so they can associate that good behavior with you. So now, my framework is APAG. That means attention, perspective, advantage, and gamify. What can this be used for? It can be used for your newsletter, your podcast or YouTube scripts, multiple threads or medium form posts, sales pages, landing pages or opt-in pages, book or ebook chapters or sections, course modules, lead magnet modules or other education, potential ideas for tweets or short form posts, anything else that you use to build your business. This framework is used when you go to write anything. It can be used for a newsletter, course module. It can be used for sections of a book. When you go to write anything, Think of this framework, APAG, Attention, Perspective, Advantage, Gamify. This part of the video is pulled from my course to our writer. So if you want everything else that goes along with this and you like the depth of this information, consider grabbing that course. So let's talk about A, which is attention, the art of hooks and headlines. Your hook or headline are the most important aspect of your content. If the hook doesn't catch their attention, are they going to read the rest of the content that you put a lot of effort into? or will they scroll past, leaving your hard work gone unnoticed? These are the three things that will make them continue reading. One is relevance. How relevant is it to their everyday life? Use resolved pains or potential benefits. What's in it for the reader? Two is awareness. Is it simple or complex enough for the level of awareness you are targeting? Will they understand what you are about to show them? Three is effort. How fast will they receive the result, which is either education, entertainment, or inspiration, and is that easy to get? These do not all have to be included in your headline or hook, but they should all be considered. The most potent ones should be used. In a newsletter or article headline, you have much less room than a hook in a thread or a medium form post like a LinkedIn post. Now we can start to piece together our headline or hook with pieces of our outline and article, the problems, benefits, experiences, etc. These are the building blocks of a perfect hook and even a product because when you're writing out the product description on paper or your landing page, it needs to be persuasive. It needs to catch people's attention. This framework does not only apply to writing. It applies to how you structure your products or anything that you do so that you can write with them more effectively. First is the big problem. You can create this by summarizing all of the problems you have listed. The second is the big benefit. Again, you can create this by summarizing all the benefits into one. Third is the big idea. Can you summarize the most impactful parts of the post into one sentence? Fourth is the transformation process. You can use numbers or unique name to hint at the process that will get them results, posing an information gap. Fifth is time frame. Can you quantify a time frame for how long it will take them to read the content or get the result you are promising? Use numbers. Sixth is negative personal experience. If you include a personal experience in your content, can you imply a low point during that experience and the emotion associated with it? You want to treat all of those as a building block for your hook. Big problem, big benefit, big idea, transformation process, time frame, negative personal experience. All of those based around the topic you are going to write about. I would also encourage you to pay attention to these whenever you are looking at YouTube video titles or newsletter headlines or article headlines or even just tweets or content. Pay attention to what they're using to catch your attention. Don't read as a consumer, read as a researcher. And you don't have to include all of these just in the headline. They can be sprinkled throughout the hook and the next section that we'll go over. But here's a tweet that implies a problem, benefit, or transformation in one sentence. You won't make it without obsession. But nobody starts out obsessed. They start out curious. They experiment. They build things. They break things. They fail. And eventually, they can't pull themselves away. Curiosity turns into obsession with time and persistence. So, the sentence there, you won't make it without obsession. That implies an end result, which is making it. It implies a problem, which is not making it. And that alone displays a transformation, right? So you can get unique with these things, but it can be as easy as like seven steps to avoid a life you hate or something, something, something. It's always pains and benefits and a potentially unique process for bridging the gap between those so that you have a transformation. And just to note, this isn't only for headlines, it's also for hooks. This doesn't have to be one sentence, it can be an entire 
tweet. It can be an entire first slide of your carousel. It can be an entire part of the LinkedIn post that is showing before it says read more. You need to learn how to write hooks with those building blocks available to you. If you practice that, you're good. So the second part of this framework is P, perspective. And you're painting a picture of the enemy or why a certain perspective is wrong. This is where you relate to and amplify the problems that the reader is currently experiencing. This is also where you create the enemy of your story. The best way you can do this is to paint a picture of a common perspective on the topic you are writing about. Place a heavy emphasis on the problems associated with that perspective and the pains they cause. This can be stated directly or implied. So here's an example tweet of how I do this. Wake up, hit snooze four times, stare at your phone, roll out of bed, make coffee, sit in traffic, eight hours of unfulfilling work, sit in traffic, again, argue with your significant other, walk the pet, watch TV, pass out, repeat. This should scare the shit out of you. So not only does this paint the perspective of a mediocre lifestyle, but I actually use this in the introduction of my book because it's a part of it. It's a part of hooking people in and making people aware of a problem so that they want to overcome it and continue reading by doing so. So in this section for perspective, what you're just doing is painting a common perspective so that you can eventually give your perspective, right? Your advantageous perspective, right? So if uh, everyone in your high school is saying that you should go to college and get a job, then your perspective is you should uh, buy courses and learn online or something like that. It's just you're presenting points of views online in your writing. That's all you're doing. That's all people are reading is points of views from humans. So if you're not sure what to say in this section, you have to understand that good writing is about piecing together what's available to you. So for perspective, you can use problems, benefits, examples, metaphors, quotes, or tweets, personal or popular stories, comparisons, or concepts. Any of those elements, that's what we call them in cortex is elements, can be used to start transition or end a section, right? So let's take one of those problem. You can start that at any section in your article or your thread or your tweet or whatever it is. You include a problem. You don't just write things out. You have to understand the elements of psychology. That's what we're using here. If you don't know what to write after that, use an example. As I just listed out, don't know what to write after that, use a metaphor. And then you just piece things, these things together and go as long as you want. And then it's like, you don't know what to do after that, use a comparison. And then after that, use a personal experience. After that, find a quote that you really like and plug it there to bring more credibility to your argument. Now, the third part of this framework is a advantage, which is to paint a picture of the hero or the new vision or why your perspective is right. Note that any part of the APAC framework can be a single line or an entire section of content. As long as you hit on each part, you're fine. If you can't think of anything more to write, move on to the next part. With persuasive writing, you're presenting a credible argument to sell something. You are always selling, or at least you should be. Not only selling products, but selling ideas and better ways of doing things. That's what people want. Sell people out of a low consciousness existence. So now that you've painted a picture of their faulty perspective, you need to provide them a better one to adopt. How can you educate people to the point of understanding your perspective? What do they need to know in order to understand where you are now? What is missing from your writing that prevents them from understanding your better way of doing things? This is where you can present novel ideas, concepts, social proof, and experiences that make your argument credible. If you have quotes, tweets, or other references you can include, that will only make your argument more credible. So here's an example of an advantage tweet that I wrote. Writing is a great skill to learn because it pairs with any other skill or interest. If you can write, you can do whatever you want and distribute the value you discover from those pursuits. Writing allows you to make a living from living. The problem is that most people aren't. So with these, I'm showing my tweets because they can be used in long form or short form writing. When you're starting the section, like you're starting the very top of a newsletter, you treat it as if you're writing a tweet. You hook an attention, you wrap it up, you, you get people interested. And again, you can use examples, problems, benefits, stories, metaphors, quotes, tweets, etc. to help structure your argument and make it more credible. Now, the fourth step is to gamify or to create a hierarchy of goals or a game for people to follow. When you think of a game, you think of a set hierarchy of goals or quests, missions, etc. that give people clarity on what to do. When done correctly, and when you give people a challenge that matches their skill, you put your readers into a flow state of discovering novel ideas that aid in their future. In short, you gamify by giving step-by-step -step advice on how to achieve the transformation you've described in the post, from old, problem-ridden perspective to an advantageous perspective. 
you are wrapping everything up into a clear, concise, and actual way of getting a specific result and making it clear on what they should do next. What are the steps or advice that will help them overcome the problem you mentioned in perspective? What can they implement right now that will get them results? List off steps, key points, or other things like a list of books to read that helps them solve the problem. So here is a unique example of a gamify tweet that I wrote, and this turned into a daily routine newsletter. And it could easily be turned into points of a thread or an Instagram carousel. You need four habits, one that builds your mind, one that builds your body, one that builds your business, one that builds your relationships. The good life is the process of becoming everything you could be. So you see there that in like in a newsletter to go over it in the attention, I could say the daily routine that changed my life in perspective of this APAC framework, I could paint a picture of the average everyday routine that people go through in advantage. I can paint a picture of why the daily routine that I like is better. And then I can go over the daily routine, which is one habit to build the mind body, spirit, relationships, business, whatever I said in the tweet. Like you see how all of that pieces together, that's the APAC framework. So if this doesn't make sense yet, because it won't, because overwhelm is a good thing and you're going to feel overwhelmed with all of this, you have to actually practice until it's solidified or digested into your mind. You will have to understand and internalize the structure of most long form content online. You will also have to understand storytelling. They both interconnect. Here is the general persuasive writing structure. You have a hook, we've talked about this. You have a lead, which is introducing and agitating the problem. You have the body, which is the key points, numbered or not, separated by headlines to help learn and understand the topic. Then you have a conclusion, a summary or step-by-step -step advice to overcoming the problem. Then you have a call to action, a call to action to do something next, and this isn't necessary on short posts. This is a storytelling structure. This is storytelling, because storytelling is not always just a literal story. It can be metaphorical. Stories consist of anecdotes, research, examples, metaphors, quotes, tweets, videos, other content, and anything else you can do to help someone else understand. This is why it's important to have a second brain, like Cortex, filled with ideas you collect. Writing becomes so easy as it grows, you just piece ideas together in infinite ways. You present a problem and guide someone to overcome it. So let's talk about the key to short form writing, because any piece above the attention, perspective, advantage, and gamify can all be used to write their own tweets or like the structure of a specific tweet or Instagram post or LinkedIn post or script, real script, video script, whatever. But how do you get better at writing them? Emulation. I learned to write good tweets through observation. Since you have ideas flowing from your other writing, take those ideas and study quotes from your favorite authors. Use tools like Twemex, or it's also called Tweet Hunter X, to research high performing posts. Be a researcher, not a consumer. Read social media content to study other post structures. For every post you see, try to recreate it with your own ideas to train your mind to write like that. Drown yourself in good short form writing. Use their sentence structure as training wheels to write your own. Contemplate why that writing does well. How does it make you feel? And why does it make you feel that way? This is important because long form content or even threads. Let's look at a thread for example. Every part of the thread is a tweet. If you know how to write good tweets, you know how to write good threads. If you know how to write good tweets, you also know how to write good newsletters because it's just you're just writing tweets until you fill up that long page. So I've written an entire video on how to write short form content. I linked it earlier. It's uh, social media content 101. And if you want to download my best ideas that you can kind of practice from or use as training wheels, it's like a swipe file. Uh, you can download that with the Dropbox link in the description. It's free. I'm not asking for anything. Just download it, use it, practice. So thank you for watching. That really helped. Uh, final plug. I'm going to be plugging this for a while, but paperback of the Art of Focus is out. Pretty cool. Other links in the description to our writer, Digital Economics, Cortex University. Just check them out. See if any are fit for you. Thanks for watching. Peace.